Yeah, just uh, first of all, thank you guys for, for making the trip. Um, really proud of our football team. Um, you know, found a way to be 2-0. and um, Certainly not perfect, certainly not uh, where we need to be. But, um, you know, really proud of a lot of guys uh, for stepping up. Proud of our team. You know, we had that, uh, we gave up that touchdown right before the half. And, and um, I told them at halftime, I said, boy, aren't we lucky that this happened to us? You know, just an opportunity to, to find out, you know, if we could battle back from adversity and, and for us to come out in the second, you know, third quarter. I thought we were really good in the third quarter. Um, exciting. So um, he wrote some notes here. So let me just see if I can read these things. Uh, I, I want to make, sure make sure I give credit to UTSA. And that's a football team. That's a real football team. I like the way they play. They have edge. They're tough. They're big. They're physical. They held us under 100 yards rushing, which is unacceptable. They ran the football. Um, downhill physical. You know, we knew that last week's score for them was not indicative of who they are. And Frank Wilson's a winner. They, I, they, I like their team. And uh, we knew it was going to be a battle. We challenged our guys to, to be good in the fourth quarter. And I was proud of our guys. And, you know, I told them we were going to play for 60 minutes. You know, we weren't going to take a knee. We weren't going to. I didn't care if we were up 50 or down 50, we were going to play it to the last snap. And that's what we tried to do. So um, I was excited for those guys, you know. I thought the crowd, credit to UTSA's crowd, really proud of the Baylor. There was a great Baylor contingent there, but boy, was that ever loud. I mean, we had so many plays on offense that we gave away where we were confused. And, you know, I'm talking in the headset, and they can't even hear the play to signal it. And those aren't excuses. That's just a credit to their crowd. And I think they said it was the second biggest crowd in UTSA history, and you could certainly feel that. So. Uh, Charlie, I thought uh, Charlie did a great job of, of, of getting us moving. Um, first, just so you guys, we're going to play both quarterbacks. Um, Jalen just, you know, didn't get a chance to really get going. Some drops hurt him while he was out there. Made some big time throws, um, but uh, we just guys didn't make the plays. And I thought we just needed Charlie's feet, and uh, Charlie's feet were able to, you know, help us because we weren't um, we weren't really making the plays in the pocket that we needed, um, you know, in terms of protecting. And so, you know. Um, We've had a couple injuries. Fu Morgan's back. John Carlo was available. Elisa gets his first career start. It wasn't perfect up front by any means, but um, you know I thought we were able to settle down after a while and, and find a way to make some things happen. So, uh, you know, he tells me this is the first time scoring in the first eight quarters to start a season since 2014. Since 16. Since okay, since 2014, 2016. So I, all I can say to you guys is I'm just happy for our guys. You know, we we told them um, um, we told them that. You know, when you get into these football games, right, especially when you play a team that's tough and has moxie like they do, you know, it's not about panicking. It's not about getting complacent. It's about playing. And um, um, I told them at the half, I, you know, I probably would normally take a knee. And we thought we had a shot down the sideline to Mims, and we did. And they sacked, fumbled, and we went out there and they scored. And, and just proud of our guys to, to, not, to not quit, to not complain, just to keep playing. And so um, we have a lot of things to get better at. Our, our run defense we have to get better at. Our ability to run the football we have to get better at. We got to throw and catch the football better. We had left a lot of yards on the field. I mean, a lot of yards on the field. But it's always better to have that happen when you win, right? So we'll continue to work, continue to grind. And uh, you know, you guys asked me a lot about physical practices and all those things. I told our guys out there, you know, we just sat there and played 60 minutes in a dome versus a tough team, physical, hard-nosed football game. No one got hurt. Our whole team was healthy at the end. Bravion, you know, banged up right back out there. So um, I'm proud of the way our team's developing, you know, an edge and developing into a tougher team and. Um, we got to get a lot better before we start playing these teams that are coming to town. You know, starting with Duke and Coach Cutcliffe, who's a really kind of a hero of mine. Um, so we got to get a lot better. But uh, for one day, really proud of uh, our guys' effort and happy to see them be 2-0 and and happy to see them celebrate. And uh, hopefully we can, uh, you know, we wear, we wear coat and tie to the game and I told them to put their jogging suits on and let's enjoy a bus ride back. So. Matt, it, uh, it, seemed like, it seemed like Charlie just kind of gave them whatever y'all needed, especially in the second half. Maybe I'll need a play. He just had it for Yeah, I thought he played well. Again, and again, um, you know, um, I thought, uh, again, some of the clock issue, I mean, it was, you know, because it, it was on Facebook, you know, the clock was really fast. You know, there was, the timeouts weren't as long. And someone asked me going into the game, was that going to be an issue? I said, no, it was an issue. It was fast. And, uh, but I thought the referees, I thought they were fair. They tried to help us, you know, understand how fast it was going to go. But we took some penalties, which I can't stand. Um, but I just thought Charlie did a good job. You know, we're two of six at halftime in, in, in the first half. On um, third down, at, you know, at halftime, and in the second half, you know, to finish, I think eight of sixteen, so we're six of eight or whatever. I'm not smart right, with, with math, right? But six of eight, I think, in the second half, so it were significantly improved. I thought our old line settled down, and the biggest thing is, you know, in the first half, our guys were ready to play. We were hyperventilating a little bit. Coach, I was hyperventilating. Like we were excited, we just had to kind of settle down. But um, again, you know, Jalen's Jalen's one, you know, he's one block by a tackle away from throwing a ball down the sideline to go into the half and go up 27-7. So I I know both quarterbacks what they can do. Last week. 
Jalen was the hot hand. He played the he played the second half this week. It was Charlie. Um, really, to me, the story was more about you know our ability to catch the football. We catch the football just a little bit better now, guys, and that's a, that's a, a lot more yards throwing and maybe opens a few more things up. So, thought it was a good job though um, by a lot of our you know our receivers in the second half of stepping up and making some big the play by Platt down the sideline. It's a big time football play. You talked last week about the killer instinct that maybe they didn't have. First half against ACU. Did you see some of that this week improving? Yeah, I mean, I just think, um, you know, to come out in the second half, and um, I think we held them scoreless in the third quarter, is that correct? And um, they had that one drive there at the beginning of the fourth, and they got down there. And, you know, they, I mean, they're, they're a good football team. They're going to make some plays. And, uh, um, but, you know, for our offense to, to just continually find, go down there and score, uh, for our guys, you know, we were surprised on side. You know, that's a, that's a big play in the game, you know. And um, I didn't see a lot of guys, you know, celebrating and getting complacent. You know, they made some plays, and so we have to correct that. We have to correct probably our two-minute defense a little bit. Um, it's twice now in the last two weeks, right before the half, a team's gone down and scored. And uh, we have to close that out. But um, that last drive, you know, we put the backups in. You know, we put the twos. It's a bunch of freshmen out there. And for them to stop those guys, you know, they had their starters out there for them to stop them. That's a big deal. It doesn't show up in the score sheet, but it's part of our ethos. It's part of playing 60 minutes. And, uh, um, so I'm happy with those guys. And I, you know, there's a bunch of guys out there. You know, there's Craig Williams, who was a true freshman, who we're trying to save, you know, you know, save his red shirt. He didn't play. And uh, I just, this, this thing sounds dumb probably, but I just like the fact that he was that end of the game. I like the fact that Gary Bohannon's on the headset and he's telling me like, hey, I like this, I like that. I like Garrett McGuire walking up and giving me, a, hey coach, we have this. You know I mean? Like, there's just a lot of guys on the team who aren't pouting because they're not playing, you know? They know their time's gonna come. And so, that part I like, because it's really like a group thing, right? It's a feel thing by everybody. When everybody's sitting there saying, let's play 60 minutes, it's a lot better. I wish we wouldn't have had all the pushing and shoving at the end and all the silliness. There was no need for that. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm also proud of the fact that our guys, like, you know, we didn't back down from anybody today either. We played, we played football, so. Matt, uh, you mentioned ethos. As far as y'all ethos being aggressive, I mean, you, you had the onside kick. You mentioned foregoing the knee at the end of the half. I mean, you had a trick play, you know, I mean, uh, is that kind of who y'all want to be as aggressive? Yeah, I mean, I, I, to, I told our guys, you know, every game's different, right? And so there might have been some games where I would have gotten in the fourth quarter and would have run the ball every single play and gotten the game over with, right? Um, number one, with what they were doing, that was going to be hard. You know, I mean, like we couldn't even get the ball in from the one. I mean, they have everybody inside, so we had to kind of do something to get the ball outside and find a way to score, or, you know, we thought we were going to have to. Great effort by Jamichael. Um, so every game's a little bit different. But I, I told our guys going into this game that um, – that we were going to empty the, you know, we were going to empty everything we had, and um, that doesn't mean we didn't. We did that last week too. It just was a little more successful early, last week. This week, you know, we had some big plays that um, that they played <laughs> or that they made a play on. So, but the surprise on sides, we did that because we thought it was there. You know, we watched the film. We say, hey, it's there. We went to two kickoffs. We said it's there. It's there. Let's do it. And um, part of that comes from having real alignment, you know. And that's that's one of the things we try to do. Is I've said, you've heard me say it. I don't want to have an offense. I don't want to have a defense. I want to have a team. And, you know, we told them last night, and I said to the defense, hey, we're going surprise on side. If they don't get it, I expect you guys to be excited to go play. And they were, I mean, Ira Lewis was out, was awesome today. He's smacking me and hitting me, saying, I told you I got you, you know. And so um, next week, it probably won't be there, and we won't do it, you know. So we'll always try to take what we have, but we, we have to have confidence in our players to do that. And that was the message to our players was, players win games, coaches don't. And we were going to let our players go win the game, and Drew Galitz made the play, you know, and, and uh, you know, Jay Red threw the ball to Charlie, and Charlie made the play. And we had a couple other plays probably that, um, you know, we could have made. So Denzel Mims' catch on the, on the touchdown. Like, we challenged him on that. He was an elite-level catch. So um, a lot of plays those guys made. Last year, team was in so many tight ball games in the fourth quarter. How good was it to see them be on the right side of one of those tight ball games here? Yeah, I'm excited, you know. I mean, um, um, you know, that's who we want to be. We want to have a fourth quarter shutout. We did it last week. We did not do it this week. But we were close, you know. I mean, once after they scored, you know, right before the half, um, we, were, we were able to do that. We were able to figure out how to, how to make that happen. So, um, you know, I was pleased with the fact that we continued to, you know, be aggressive on offense and we continued to be aggressive on defense and guys played hard. So, um, you know, that's, again, that's, that's really what we want. We want to play for 60 minutes, you know, and I don't care if we're, when you turn the tape on, I'd like you to not know whether we're winning or losing. You just know that we're playing. And so, We'll watch the film. I'm sure there'll be a thousand things I'll be upset about tonight when I'm watching it. But, but uh, really, I want to say this again. Really proud of our players. I mean, this was a tough environment, and I thought they handled it really well. You mentioned the uh, run defense and had to get better. Uh, where did you see the biggest struggle? Was it just what they were doing, or 
Do you think it was a which yeah, as well? Um, you know, that, that first big run, which was the one that really kind of hurt us, you know, it's just a, that's a play where we repped that 100,000 times, and linebacker's got to be outside, safety fits inside, linebacker went, he went inside, safety went inside, and the ball spills. Yeah. And so um, when you play our defense, you know, you have to have precise aggression. You can't just throw your body in there. You've got to be on the right side, and a good back will make you miss. And so the good news is, and it's because they had all those jumbotrons up there, we could kind of watch the game as it happened. You know, we, we told our guys, it's, it's not like, hey, we're not good enough. We just got to do our job, right? And so we were able to settle down and, and fit it. Um, if I saw anything today, just a lot of piles kind of fell forward for them and didn't fall forward for us. And that's the area we have to improve moving forward is, you know, we've got to become a more fit. We can't rely on throwing the ball every play to win a lot of games, right? I mean, you can win a lot. You can win some games that way. You can't win a ton. So, but we'll get we'll get better. We'll get bigger. We'll get stronger. You know, I mean, we'll continue. We're strong. But Tyrone Hunt will be back. Um, you know, uh, hopefully we'll get some other guys back and uh, um, continue to improve that area of our team. What, what did Clay Johnston coming back? That, you know, it gave us another guy who can make plays. I you know, wouldn't be able to tell you how he played, right, because I'm out there just kind of watching it. But I thought he flew around. You know, we tried to do a good job of, of mixing him up. You know, Chad Kelly, uh, who played well last week, you know, had a little has a, a, sort of a chronic ankle that's bothering him. So we were able to play Ross and uh, Clay. I thought Blake Lynch, you know, went back to safety. It looked like he did some good things, you know. So um, it's like everything else, you know, you're never as good as you think you are when you win. You're never as bad as you think you are when you lose, right? So. <clears throat> we'll go back, we'll correct it, we'll, we'll come back, and we'll get ready for a great football team next week. Was the uh, Atkinson throw, was that Philly special? Yeah, we've been, uh, we, we ran that last year against Oklahoma State, and it didn't work. And then we ran it against Kansas, and I think it did work, right? So that's just something we kind of always have in. And, um, you know, they're a man-to-man -man team, right? So when you're a man-to-man -man team, the only guy you don't have a man for is a quarterback. And so, um, uh, you, know, you know, it's just sort of uh, – play that we knew we had there and it's you know a very special man in our program is, is George DeLeon and uh, he was leaving to go have surgery on Wednesday I mean like serious surgery and if anybody knows George he stayed through Tuesday practice <laughs> you know, of course right and uh, before he left he was like hey don't forget throw back to the quarterback you know just I mean as I told our players I mean just just you talk about toughness you talk about dedication you talk about all in that's George and so you know just seemed appropriate you know we got the onside kick they're playing man we went with it Jared Atkinson has a unique knack for, I mean, we've thrown a bunch of them with him. And um, um, it was cool to see it work. So, but uh, not quite Philly special, but I guess maybe something similar. <laughs> Coach, there was so many momentum swings at the end of the first half with the onside and that really special play uh, that culminated with the, the fumble and then their, their touchdown. Uh, you kept everybody, the whole team on the field in front of the marching band at, right before you walked, walked in the tunnel. What, what exactly did you say to them in, in that moment right there? So the reality is I don't really remember everything that I said, <laughs> to be quite honest. I said, I said that was on me, that I went for the jugular on that, that before the half. And I'm not, not saying I wish I wouldn't have. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like, you, you, you can't always just have it. Oh, I want it to work. When it works, it's a good call. I said, go for it. It didn't work. I said, Phil, that's why Phil Snow's the best. He's like, don't worry about that. Keep playing. Um, so we went for the jugular. Then, then they got it. They went down. They scored. And as I told our team, I said, uh, um, there, I just said, you know, who, who are we going to be? You know what I mean? Like, this is, this, that's all me. Let's keep playing, man. Like, this is exactly what we said it was going to be. It's going to be a four-quarter battle. Like, you don't, um, you don't lose to a team the year before and then come to their place and think they're going to be intimidated by you. Or, or, you know, that, that's a tough football team. So we knew it was going to be 60 minutes. And so I just told our guys, I went to get them before they all got in the locker room and started getting taped and started getting this. And then I came in the locker room, I got them again and just said, you know, Hey, you know, again, how lucky are we that that happened? Because now we have to go battle. And what our team needs is our team needs to be tested. It needs to have some success. It needs to make some mistakes. It needs to over learn over overcome them, and just keep getting better as a total team. What did you tell the offense after uh, those two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties? What did you tell them on the sideline? Two unsportsmanlike conduct. One with Jalen. You know, I mean, obviously it was fourth and one, right? I mean, talk about putting a game away. And you know, Jalen is one of the elite competitors I've ever been around. And I just keep reminding him, you know, go to the edge, not over it, right? And that was just a terrible drive by us all around, right? Because we kept having penalty after penalty after penalty because literally I'm saying the play to the guy signaling it and he can't hear me. And that's, again, not, don't please don't ever think that things are excuses. I'm just saying that's what it was, right? And so, um, um, but that one, I can't know if I remember the other one. What was the other one? Um, yeah, yeah, you know, hit the guy on that one. And, you know, um, just can't have it both ways. You know, as I said to our guys, you know, if we're playing to the whistle and playing hard and we get a penalty, I can live with that. What I can't live with is when we disrespect other people, we demean them, you know, use the wrong language, all that stuff, right? But if we're playing hard and a guy hits a guy, I mean, we're, we're going to play. Um, so, you know, 
I, I called the guys up at the very end and just said, you know, understand, like, we don't need to not have someone next week for Duke because we got thrown out of this football game, right? So, and again, we want to make sure we show respect to UTSA. It's a good football team, tough football team. The way football should be played was played tonight by them. You talked a lot about going for the jugular, especially with that outside kick and then that really special play. But then when you got down there, instead of going for it on fourth, you kicked the field goal. Can you kind of walk us through your thoughts on that? I, I don't know that I can remember that one. I'm sorry. Um, was it fourth and? Uh, yeah. You had a lot of risky big plays right, right. leading up to that. And gotcha. that and then... Yeah, I'd had to, I'm sorry. <laughs> the game goes so fast for me. You know, um, I have a lot of confidence in our. I have a lot of confidence in our um, kicker. You know, so and I thought that was a game. Of, I really thought that was a game of just collecting points. You know, and uh, early on our third downs were not what the, you know they needed to be. And so um, he bailed. He's bailed us out a bunch. You know, we threw like the one shallow crop. You know, little plays in the game like we throw a ball to Ebner. Edner gets forward, gets to the 30 yard line, we're able to kick the field goal. You know, um, an unsung hero today. I mean, Tyquan Thornton, you know, he drops the he drops the the new rule, right? The, the fair catch. He drops at the two, we get it at the two, but then or three, but then we go 97. And you know, we came right back and threw, tried to throw a go ball to him. And Charlie Scramble got a first down. So um, but yeah, I just thought this was a game of collecting points, you know, just the more points we had, the better we would be. Sometimes it's more of a, you know, hey, fourth and one, fourth and two, but you know, they present a lot of challenges in terms of the things that they the first two teams that we played. I mean, it's like the encyclopedia of defensive football in terms of the amount of things that they're bringing, zone pressures, man pressures, um, bare defense. I mean, it's, you know, and that's why we threw, threw the ball so much tonight. Um, but I'm sorry, I just can't remember the details other than just um, I thought anytime we were in field goal range, we were going to find, you know, try to find a way to do that. And uh, I'll say I thought a big play in the football game was Tyquan Thornton on that, you know, that shallow cross that he turned up the field. I mean, as a true freshman to go out there and, and, and make that play, um, that really kept the momentum going for us in the fourth quarter. What was it like in the locker room when you got in there tonight? What Afterwards? What were the players like? After the game? Mm -hmm. um, you know, they were excited, and then I just I got them right down on a knee. You know, we always want to make sure we give thanks, you know, so we, we say a quick prayer. And, um, you know, I think the thing that I tried to do last year is the same thing I'm trying to do this year. And the same thing I'll try to do, you know, next year is always – Take the good and the bad, man. Enjoy the win. That's a hard play. This is a hard. This is a hard day. Um, I think all of us know that there's something else we can get better at. You know, we, we, so it wasn't good enough, but it's definitely getting better. Talked about all that. Talked about being respectful. I made sure I praised their tough, our team's toughness to battle in the second half. And uh, that they looked at me. I, I saw a lot of head shaking. Like they get, they get it, right? Like they get how important those things are. Um, I like the way they complimented each other. I like the way, you know, like today, today wasn't Jalen's night. He's got to be unbelievably disappointed, right, because he prepared his tail off, and I hate that for him. But I'm going right back to Jalen next week. And Charlie was disappointed last week, but I came right back to Charlie. And it's the same thing at running back. It's the same thing everywhere. So I made sure I, we addressed all those. But I, I like the look in their eye. They all shook their head. They know we got to get better, but we've gotten better. We can enjoy this now. And I told them, you know, enjoy it for a night, and they seemed like they were going to. Why can't you run the ball sometimes on the short yard, which is supposed to be hard. Right. It's not supposed to be easy, but you're – you're not getting pushed there or are blown assignments? What's happening? No, um, you know, um, I'd have to go back and, and really look at tonight. But I'll say that, right? Um, um, but it's just not good enough right now. You know, I mean, that's the reality of it, right? We're just not lining up and knocking people off the football the way that I know that we, we, we want to, right? Now, the last one that Michael got, and that's an old school fullback belly. Right, and we were able to get it there. I thought we made a nice adjustment on third down in the second half in terms of we were going to keep it spread out. You know, my dad, um, who's around the building, he doesn't say much to us. He's like, how can you always put, you know, big people in on third and one, you know, and kind of used to being able to line up and, you know, knock you back and, you know, take your soul and get a yard, right? And so that really hasn't been us. And so I'm not dumb enough to keep trying to do it. So we tried some other things today. We tried a little reverse to Jalen. We tried some different things. But there's all kinds of areas we have to get better at, and it starts with us as coaches. But, yeah, that's a – you know, that was an inability to run the football really kind of all night was uh, frustrating. Um, but again, they, you know, y'all, one thing I have learned is you have to, you have to take what they give you. And if they put everybody inside, you better go outside. And, uh, you know, we have a nice little option game. We didn't do a ton of it tonight, um, uh, but we probably could have done a little bit more. Coming up, Jalen uh, heard over 100 yards catching, Denzel Mims over 100 yards catching, and Chris Platt 50 yards. What's impressed you the most about your receiving core as a whole tonight and then last week? They're blocking how unselfish they are. Like even the one that Mims caught, that they called the, hold, they called the holding on Platt, I didn't care. I told him keep blocking. I mean, they, that, is an, that is a selfless, selfless group, you know. And so, um, um, you know, I wish we'd have caught the ball, a little, few more balls. But um, um, I, I just love how unselfish they are. And, um, 
you know, they'll, they'll continue to catch more and more and more. I mean, Platt was a, probably a step or two away from, you know, another couple big plays. So um, we'll continue to improve, you know, but um, I just thought that was one thing I thought, like just how, how versatile and how unselfish those guys all are uh, with each other. Sometimes you have receivers, you know, they, they get upset about why is he touching the ball, why is he touching the ball. But even though even Platt, you know, he had the nice run. Um, so having the ability to have receivers that we can hand the ball to as well is important. Matt, it was away from you, but that, that play where Charlie avoided the sack and threw the touchdown to Jalen, is that just kind of who he is and his escapability and all that? Yeah, that's what, you know, I, again, I thought we were under duress a little bit too much tonight. And uh, that's kind of a, you know, uh, Glenn Thomas is up in the box. And Glenn Thomas, I, you know, I said, hey, Glenn, what do you think? And, and, he, and he said, hey, let's, you know, let's go with that play. And, you know, it's a play he ran at the Falcons, you know, that we've been running for a couple of years. And Jalen sits there and he breaks to the corner. And so it does a couple of things by Charlie. Number one, getting outside the pocket. And number two, understanding where the guy's going to be, you know, knowing that Jalen's going to be there. And we talk a lot about red zone scramble. You know, first guy goes to the front pylon. So to me, those are the pretty things when you see, like, those little things executed that, um, that aren't in the play call. They're, they're, they're outside of it. You know, that's why I say players win games. When you see players doing things, at a high, high level, that's uh, that's fun for me. What's the most excited you've ever seen Charlie Brewer? Or have you? I don't know if I've ever seen him real excited. Yeah, I mean, he, him and I were yelling. I don't know if he's, I don't know what the TV looked like. Hopefully, hopefully it didn't look too bad. Him and I were screaming at each other in the middle of the game, you know. I mean, he's, he tried to apologize to me after I said, for what? <laughs> he's, he's a competitor, man. So I'll take him, I'll take him, you know, six times. And uh, what's that saying? And twice on Sunday. I mean, he's he's a he's a winner. But we've got a lot of winners on this team. You know, we've got a lot of tough guys, and um, you know, the guy you know his name's in all the newspapers. And Jalen comes out last week and lights it up, and Charlie doesn't complain. I walk in there, they're sitting there watching film together. So, um, that, that's I, I think what I said to you guys was, my job is not to have a starting quarterback though I'd like to. My job is to have my quarterbacks be great players. And I think what you see is the situation pushing both guys to play at a high level. You know, and so. Um, I'm excited for those guys that they kept battling. How right. important was it for your Last team one. tonight to go into a, this sort of crowd noise with Stone for when they'll have to go into some of the bigger venues later? I'll tell you, now I've had a chance to coach. I'm sorry, I'm sitting back like this. I'm cramping up like crazy. Um, I've had a chance to coach in, in college. I've had a chance to coach in the NFL, not, you know, not a long time in the NFL. This was like top three loudest places I've ever been, ever. And I kept going over the official yelling at him saying, like, you sure they're not pumping crowd noise in? So I don't know what it was. I don't know if it was our headset or something, if it was us. But I mean, and I'm just saying that's a credit to them, right? You know, like pulling up, I thought you saw a pretty cool uh, game day atmosphere outside. And so I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a supporter and believer in football, right? And so I want to support all football. Like I want to, like I sat there last night and watched TCU and SMU. I was happy for both sides. You know what I mean? Like I'm not like one of those guys who only cares about Baylor. I want to care about all of football and football in Texas. And I want to care about Texas high school football. Junior college football, Division three, Division two, you know, one double A, and Division one. I. I want, I want guys to have great experiences. So it was cool to see a tremendous experience. I thought it was really good for our guys to go on the road. You know, um, handle the things that are on the road. You know, we, you know, we wear suits. You know, and so I got, you know, I got Jordan Williams calling me like at like two o'clock, asking me who are the guys that knew how to tie a bow tie, because he bought a bow tie and couldn't remember how to tie it, right? And so, I mean, there's all these new experiences, right, that are pretty, you know, interesting, right? So the next week, next time we go on the road, it'll be, we'll be better at it. We'll, you know, we'll, uh, we'll deal with it. But I thought the crowd noise and all of that, it exposes where there are weaknesses, right? It exposes, you know, maybe we have too much in, maybe we have not enough in, maybe. So I thought all that was good. And um, again, you know, all the kind of push and shoving, you mentioned the unsportsman likes. You know, we're not gonna win a lot of games if we have that many unsportsman likes. And so I can preach it, I can talk about it. Once you get bit by it, you hope you get bit by it, it doesn't kill you, right? And so it didn't kill us tonight, but we'll learn from it. And, um, you know, hopefully get better.